Channel 2 Action News investigates. Atlanta-based Home Depot is facing serious criticism from a hurricane-ravaged island for destroying more than a million pounds of supplies. Channel 2's Nicole Carr joins us live from a Home Depot in Cobb County. And Nicole, you traveled to the Virgin Islands, and that's where storm victims say this company's move showed no compassion. Well, they don't see why the company couldn't have taken the time to sift through the inventory and separate the good supplies from the damaged supplies. But Home Depot says it was under pressure, had no time, and did not want to risk being sued. No supplies. That's it. No supplies. A lot of people lost everything. We landed in St. Thomas at the end of the year to find the power out in the airport. Irma and Maria's destruction on display beyond the tourist sites and optimistic people facing a harsh reality. For some, Atlanta-based Home Depot added fuel to their fire. Let me tell you something, right? Your Home Depot, do you understand? You sell all the tools that is needed to fix Home Depot. Home Depot, like everyone else in the wake of two hurricanes, faced major damage to its St. Thomas store. But this picture of the store's goods has brought the corporation's decision making into question. I was like, they can't be throwing that away, can they? This has got to be a weird Facebook rumor. Wrapped in plastics was a platform full of supplies behind the store sometime in October. Too much truck load to even count. Much of it was in good condition, but it headed straight to the Bobani landfill, a space under scrutiny by the federal government for its inability to hold more waste. That was pre-hurricane. People in need of supplies had no idea until it was too late. Home Depot actually destroyed the goods prior to it coming to us on the landfill. Like they cut the power cords, they demolished all of goods, so nothing was usable. Records we requested from the Virgin Islands Waste Management Authority show Home Depot was allowed to dump 500 tons, but they say they didn't reach their $100 million insurance deductible and did not profit from anything. We could not sell or donate product we weren't certain was safe, but we also had vendor agreements, legal, logistical, and insurance issues that left us with no other option than to dispose of the store's inventory, the company tells Channel 2 Action News in a statement. They say they were able to support the community in other ways, but couldn't risk liability for issues like mold. Let's be realistic. How can you have a liability for a toilet? A toilet is a porcelain item that can be bleached. Kenneth Turnbull says he was fortunate to have loved ones send supplies from the continental U.S. that were needed to repair his home. He understands Home Depot's business decision. That was the easiest thing to do. It, was it the best thing? No. I don't think that was really the best thing. There's examples where corporations have made kind of difficult or, or publicly unpopular decisions. The Home Depot one is a good example. Brian O'Connor is a reporter with the U.S. Virgin Islands Daily News. Noted in his recovery reporting, corporations that have taken a much different route from Home Depot. Walgreens, for example, they had a lot of inventory that found its way into the hands of the Salvation Army. So a lot of these blue tarps on the rooftops have FEMA stamps on them. That means the money is there for people to fix their homes, but they can't get to the supplies. It's going to take years. Today, the traffic in the FEMA and SBA Center of St. Thomas is nearly 200 people a day. Money is starting to flow, but there's still uncertainty. There was a lot of things could have been done differently that would have helped the local people to survive this. Now, a legal expert calls the Home Depot move into question there on the island as he presents what many thought would be a, a good way to dodge potential liability and help those hurricane survivors move forward. That part of the story is on Channel 2 Action News at 6. We're live in Cobb County. Nicole Carr, Channel 2 Action News. You can certainly see both sides of this issue. Nicole, we will see you again at 6. Thank you.